All right, so let's set the stage real quick. What happened is a week, week ago, I spent one week in Red Deer, Alberta, where I taught 24 children <clears throat> were teenagers of various ages. I think the youngest was 12 and the oldest was 19. Uh, taught them isn't quite right. Is I just basically ran a summer camp where they would make their own game. We treated it as a game jam, essentially. A one week long game jam, with exception that the first day was dedicated to getting people's feet wet with code and noticing how many people would fall off of the interest for coding, and many did. So after the first day, we were capable of assembling six teams, each composed of four people. One of the teams lost a person later for separate reasons. And, uh, oh, hello, OMV. Uh, and, um, yeah, it went fairly well. We have six complete games. They work. And what I have never done with these kids yet is I have never given them an evaluation of their design decisions and their execution. Uh, I was involved with some teams much more than others. Um, some teams much less than others. And uh, we'll take a look at the design and the decisions they made. This video is being recorded, so it will go on YouTube in a day or so because of Twitch regulations. And anybody can ask any questions. There will be some devs in the audience that you can feel free to, uh, to ask. And all devs feel free to express opinions. So we will begin with the A team. We had A teams A to F. And they sent me a new build recently. That's what we'll do. Now, um, let me launch it and then we'll talk about it a little bit. You guys can tell me if the volume is off. So you guys should hear music. I don't know how loud it is. So, <clears throat> this team uh, set out to make a uh, roguelite, basically. They wanted to make a dungeon crawler. And we immediately asked a question, which was, shall we make it randomly generated or shall we make it a distinct design? And no audio. You are super quiet. Are you sure? Because I'm super high in volume for me. No audio. Okay. Yeah, I've been told that I'm a bit quiet by others today. Alright, technical issues. The game is too low. Okay, is this better? I keep on increasing the volume, but I don't want to overdo it because of gunshots. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so the team here was saying we want to make a roguelite. Uh, we want to make uh, dungeon crawling and all those mechanics and they started coming up with enemies and all sorts of stuff. And I didn't really put my foot down. I did mention a little bit this is gonna be a lot harder than you think. Um, especially because none of them was really a dedicated programmer. Um, they were all hardworking, but none of them with experience. So that was interesting. And I ended up helping this team way more than all others. In fact, we could easily argue I didn't really help them. I kind of almost made the game for them in certain aspects. For example, the random generation of the rooms, that's my code. Um, how the rooms lock and unlock, that's my code. Uh, you could essentially argue almost all of it is my code, which is not great, right? But this is kind of my fault, <clears throat> as well as theirs. We, we, I basically let them get away with choosing a concept that was far too difficult to execute. And I regret it now, but you know, once you're dancing, you're dancing. So let's talk about learnings in this game. <clears throat> One interesting thing, well, let's talk about mechanics first, I guess. Okay, wait a moment. I can't move, I can't, good. So, one thing that's interesting about this game is the problem of perspective. They chose a <clears throat> Binding of Isaac sort of art style, which I appreciate. Uh, but you will notice, like, odd draw order. For instance, the bottom walls always need to draw well high, whereas the top walls need to draw underneath. And what about the 2D colliders? Where are they? Well, the character is actually this tall in the collider. You know? And up here, only this bit of the wall has a collider. So there's a few interesting learnings about 
putting a game in this perspective. Another thing is the fact that you need animations for at least four directions, and the directions need to depend on when you're pointing the gun. Notice also where the gun needs to decide to draw itself back or forth, etc. And another thing, the gun is now pointing upside down, or downside up, I should say, I don't know, but weird, right? <clears throat> That's because we haven't done anything to actually fix that. But, other than that, all of this kind of worked. Um, and there's animations and it's quite cool. So, let's move to another room now. I'm controlling with WASD, right click is a sword, melee attack, and left click is a shot. I don't want to use it because I have a limited, limited amount of ammo. Okay. So this was an, a green sort of zombie-like enemy just chases you. I added the colors of the enemies. They already, they came up, came up with only two enemies. There was the um, turret, which aims at you and shoots. And then the the zombie the contr the controls applied sort of the same way for the zombie the zombie needs to have like those four different angles and animations so it's quite a lot of work but from art perspective in my opinion they did a great job as you can see there's multiple tiles we randomize them so it looks interesting etc perhaps a little dark but it kind of works with the character being brighter anyway whoop, hello i got hurt i don't know about what by what all of the turrets, all of the colors actually change things. Oh, hello. This was added after me. So this is a key. And if you pick up a key, you can actually open the final room. Well, not really open, but access the, the final boss. Oh dear, I missed. So I'm running out of ammo. Ow. When you're hurt, there's invisibility for a bit, which is nice. So you can start mowing people down. Yellow is a sniper. Blue is immune to shots. Ammo. Very nice. Wait, I think we had a heart back here. Yes. So my goal is just finishing the game. Showing everyone what, what these kids have done. I got hurt. I'm not sure how. There's something wrong with the colliders, I think. Hmm. We'll see. Obviously, there are some bugs that's entirely normal right when you have this little time to make a game there will be bugs out got a hit okay here we go and as you can see the, the rooms unlock uh, as you go through boom uh oh ran out of ammo Ooh, one shell that's not great but as long as you have loads of health you'll be all right the idea was to also have a boss room later obviously we weren't able to implement that we just implemented a room with loads of enemies which would be this one I ran out of ammo can he make it the answer is yes and when you beat it there's Keanu Reeves and you walk into Keanu Reeves who kills you and then you need to press enter to satisfy Keanu again. And the game simply restarts. So, this game ended up being... Welcome, said real big deal. <laughs> five days, if I'm right, yes, five days. It took us five days to do this. Um, so, what was I going to say? Right, the, the game's art looks fantastic in my opinion, uh, considering how little time we had. There's loads of attention to detail, etc, etc, but obviously the implementation of it was done by me, which is not brilliant. Um, the game has very little variety, and the, it's completely imbalanced. So you have total random chance that hearts are going to fall down, there's far too many hearts, so there's very little risk of danger, um, you stay immune for a very long time, which also isn't great. And then there's the whole like, uh, did bullets hit, did bullets not hit, uh, feedback is fairly poor. I think it's got to do with the perspective at least somewhat. Uh, I think another weak spot is sound. The music wasn't done, but it wasn't done, but these, this team was done by someone else. Uh, another member of another team who was very prolific in helping others with making music and big thanks to him. Uh, in this particular case, the song doesn't loop properly, but I'm sure he knows. Um, yeah, so the problem with taking on a project that's this ambitious for such little time is that almost certainly you're going to end up 
having a project that's substantially lower quality. Like, even if the sum of its parts are great, or pretty good, you're still gonna end up with a game that eh, sort of works. You'll see soon another team went with level design as an option, and they were substantially more prepared and already sort of working together, had been working together in previous years. And so they were working on like a much better oil machine. Um, we'll examine their game soon. But yeah, so this game, unfortunately, despite the amount of effort that they themselves and myself put into this. And by the way, this was the hardest working team. Uh, I think three of the four teammates would stay all the way until curfew to work on it. Uh, yeah, I think the game is fairly meh in the end of the day, unfortunately. It's 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 great for somebody who's never done anything like this before, but then again, if I hadn't been there, this wouldn't have gone there, and that's my fault. I should have done a better job of putting my foot down and saying, your game is too... Um, too ambitious. But, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. <laughs> Hi, Zed, real big deal. Um, okay, so are we good to move on? Or does Team A, if any of you are here, I know some of you are here, uh, have any comments to make? Any uh, objections to what I've said? <clears throat> any devs that have any comments? We'd be happy to hear from you. I'm sure user is impressed from what he, by what he sees. Or Alita hat. Yeah, I agree. I think the art looks amazing. I should probably read the comments out loud. I thought the art looked really good for a, such a so short amount of time. Yes. I'm totally down with that. The art was done by uh, two of the kids, James and Jack. I think they did most of the art. <clears throat> I'm a little annoyed that the music didn't look... That's all right. That's all right. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> you helped them with the music. Like, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> like one hour before the end of day of the last day? You're fine. Yeah, exactly. We have the full loop. This is actually a very satisfactory thing. Will you be teaching again? Yes, that is the idea. In fact, we are negotiating for next year for the same summer camp. A natural dog says, yeah, he had 45 minutes. Well, he did a good job. Let's go ahead and continue to Team B. Let's take a look at this. Team B. What have we got? Ascension. Oh, well. That's quite serendipitous. Simple beginnings. So this is the team that instead worked like a well-oiled machine. They barely needed any input from me. I mean, in my personal opinion, almost to a fault. I did jump in every now and then to talk about design decisions and everything. Let me lower the volume here a little bit for you guys and for myself because I'm going to go nuts. <clears throat> uh, oh, let me read a comment about before. I agree with the whole ambitious part, and I think we uh, took it a bit too far, but it was... But I was... Wait a moment. But I was, and I think the team was super happy you helped a lot. Ah, that's fine. I'm happy you guys were happy. This was your group. A natural dog. Alright, so... Let's talk real quick about things in this particular group. Like I was saying, they worked really well. Uh, I, I almost never intervened. I talked primarily to their programmer, whose name was Alex. I presume his name still is Alex. Uh, they were all competent, they all did a good job, uh, and they all worked really hard. Um, Jonas, their audio guy, was also helping uh, many other people out with sound, which was, I think, one of the areas in which, generally speaking, most of the teams were lacking. Uh, so this game has quite a lot of attention to detail, a lot of effort went into it, and a lot of, of, of content is in it. With that said, I need to start right away with a critique, and that is the initial song, this one here of the first level, there's different songs in different levels, but this one is very present. It's, there's loads of activity in the song, and it's fairly repetitive fairly quickly uh, it's a song that we had even trouble editing into the into the videos we had to lower its volume so the mixing is an issue it's too loud and it's so high octane it's almost too high octane it's it's peculiar now the idea behind this game is you play as a reverend uh, and you are liberating these catacomb levels whatever you want to call them 
from enemies. The goal is to kill six ghosts in this particular level. You have three hearts total. And there's enemies all over the place, and the levels are handcrafted, so let's begin. I think that they are put together, by the way, with the tile map system. So the ghost, ghost has gone aggro, I can now shoot it. And I killed it. The The Reverend has this sort of uh, single shot, like old school shotgun. And you need to click it multiple times. Uh, all of the juice, like the camera shake and the little knockback was something I suggested and Alex was quick to implement. Uh, cool attention to details here. You see here it says Wasad and there's the mouse with the left click. Very difficult to see, but it's good instructions. In the level there are these sort of levers that you can just touch and they will open doors. Very good to have this lever here just to teach players what happens. Uh, again, I believe this was one of my suggestions. They originally had levers like this one where you can't see the door. Here it says kill ghosts. Alright, let's do this. So we open the door, there's ghost. Okay, so the ghost have loads of health. There's a small bug here where this tile sort of appears and disappears better whether you kill monsters or not. It's kind of weird, but whatever. So one problem with this game is that enemies can be killed without growing aggro. So for example, that, that ghost is not aggro. I can just shoot in that direction and I will kill the enemy. Just like that. Um, yeah, so if you vaguely know where they are, or even if you don't, you can just sort of anticipate where they'll be and they'll kill and you can kill them easily. Another thing it's got, it's got random drops for hearts and it can be ridiculously easy. Uh, if you get loads of drops or ridiculously difficult if you get none and that's not brilliant Yeah, as I have said to the student many times random actually sucks <laughs> It's much better to have uh, Some kind of logic behind why things happen there. There's a perfect example of a monster that is not aggro there and I can just shoot him in the back and I'm good uh, there may one useful thing may have been like uh, bullet lifetime. Yeah, feedback is not great. Also, when you like kill the enemies, there's very little telling you that you have. But that's all right. right? Let's not ask too much here. So there we go. That's the first level. Fairly decent intro. I like the first level. I think it's well made. Um, there's a few problems with the graphics lining up, but eh, it's fine. Okay, let me read some comments uh, Comments before I continue. Oh, I pressed escape because I'm a potato. I'm going to have to start over, sorry. Uh, what I was originally imagining the game as a top-down doom and there was high action, but even though I found out the game was less action, I kept the music high obtained. Fair enough. So sorry I missed it, but how long did you teach before they started making things? Uh, some of them already had experience and I only gave them like a half day of teaching. Uh, the teaching was sort of me helping them do the their games yes okay kind of throws the atmosphere the overdone songs I would think to some extent but it's like I mean the game is very very um, action oriented I recall you were saying that you wanted the game to be sort of like a Resident Evil so a much more scary game I don't think that has been achieved at all I think probably the design intent changed over time you guys probably started with that idea and you ended up doing something else the hitbox is odd for when you get hit, or the bullets are massive, because you get hit frequently. When it doesn't look like you will be. So at any rate, this game ended up being some kind of like... Zombie... Um, hotline Miami, more or less. Which works good enough for me. Anyway, I'll redo this level. I, I can't pause. There's loads of these quality of lives, life things that games, the games obviously don't have. But I'll try to be as quick as possible, right? We don't want to stay on this level for, uh, excuse me, this game for too long. Just as long as we need to. Okay, so let's go. Get a heart. Now, one thing that's not obvious is each level you actually get a new heart. Um, you just sort of have to know. Now, here you have this huge enemy that constantly chases you. The music is odd here. Uh, sometimes the xylophone doesn't sort of match the beat to any degree. There is a secret... Well, not really that secret, but there is a switch here that theoretically... 
Um, enables you to go there in that secret place to get hearts. Now, as you can see, it's very easy in this in this level to get sandwiched, which gives a very poor um, sort of experience, very poor feeling. Oh, this song doesn't loop. I'm dead. Let's try this again. This time I'm not gonna go to the secret place because the secret place is only needed if you don't have health, but if you go to the secret place, um, you're almost guaranteed to lose some, so might as well just go. In this particular level, killing all enemies just doesn't make any sense. You just want to kill the ghost and blast through as fast as possible. That ghost looks a lot larger than its health bar would justify. Okay, so he's got a little lever. Let's open here. Let's ignore these people. Ow. There's the ghost. And as you can see, the other ghost doesn't really ever catch up to me uh, if you go fast. So, not a very scary level. But still, an interesting concept. And there we go, we're done with the second level. Much shorter than the first one. This one instead is an enormous level. Now, I've played this level before and I've seen other people play this level in the audience uh, who came to see the game. And they got lost multiple times uh, and actually gave up. I think I saw James play this game, get lost and give up on it. I'm gonna be reading the comments as soon as I'm done with this. I just wanna try to expedite going through each of the games, so. But you'll see, this is, I think, one of the most complete games we, we had in the in the gem. Uh, in the thing. It's got different types of enemies. They got missiles that they can fire at you. They've got aggro areas. Enemies that are key enemies, like the ghosts. It's pretty cool. I really like this. I mean, a lot of effort went into this. And respect to the kids. Um, now, they were asking me a question... Uh, via Discord before. Yeah, this game's huge, exactly. Um, they were asking me a question via Discord before, which was uh, not so much a question, but a comment. They had noticed that when the parents had come to see the games, nice little tile there in the middle, I like it. <laughs> uh, none of them had been able to actually finish this, this game or get any close to finishing, unfortunately. And yeah, the, the problem is they've made it into a hardcore shooter. And hardcore shooter is not synonymous with casual players. Um, if you're going to make a hardcore shooter, you are going to lose player base. You're going to gain a different type of player base, but you're going to lose casual player base. That It is what it is, right? <clears throat> I think this game is intended to be fairly difficult. Yeah, I, I hate the, the hitboxes though, that's for sure. Like, now I picked up both hearts and I know I was trying to avoid both of them. I don't know if uh, if my priest is too obese or if the hearts have a big and the bullets have a big uh, circle collider around them. I'm not sure. Yeah. You'll get hurt very quick, frequently in an uh, unexpected fashion. Okay. Everything seems to have a little bit too much health in general. Right, there's a lot of clicking you end up doing. For what seems to be no reason. The aggro of the enemies is a bit random. Like this guy has been shooting me for a very long time and he had, he couldn't see me from that far, that's for sure. So I'm not sure if they have different properties. But it's generally not a brilliant idea to change the rules of the game on the fly. The users will not know why and will resent you for it. Oh, hello. Didn't see the zombie. Unless you're doing it as a quirk, obviously, then that's a different story. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hello. So there's an interesting bug in this level as well. I think one of the red levers op opens a purple door or something like that. Um, we haven't seen it yet. We'll see it later. But this level is massive. Here they don't see you for like ages, <laughs> which is quite funny. Okay, so yeah, I've opened this door now. And you'll see there's, there's more in this game. It's actually really commendable. They did a fantastic job. This song is certainly less uh, difficult to bear than the other ones, but it, it does feel like it has a very short repetitive loop. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. There's no sound picking up the heart, at least no perceivable one. It may be too quiet. Not brilliant, but that's all right. Okay. Uh, another thing, this team did very little overtime that I recall, which means they were all working smart, which is very interesting. Well done, you. They never needed to crunch. We had a discussion about crunch on the first day. About what it is, how it works, and what the controversy about it is in the industry right now. That's interesting, right, though? Because the game is large. The repetitiveness feels a lot larger, even though there's loads of content. Like, there's loads of different enemy types. It's almost like it's not enough. But I suspect a lot of this is due to the level design. Okay, so I'm going to leave all the hearts there. This level, for example, is ginormous. And I'm not sure it benefits from being that, that big. I think they probably wanted to... to do very different levels. That was the intent. My guess is. By the way, my criticism is not to be taken as, you know, sort of negative. It's I'm just saying what I think works and what doesn't. So don't take it personally, guys. There's no, no reason for that. Okay, so there's a purple switch. Uh, I've already done this level before, so I kind of know. Oh, that's interesting. There's no wall here, but you can't fall through, so that's okay. Oh, boy. Okay, I like the feedback uh, for the sound that you hear when you kill someone. Uh, you hear that sort of like zombie groaning, and that's useful. Da -da. Come on. See what I mean? It's like loads of hits. You kind of grow a little tired of it. Okay, there was a purple switch. It opened this door. Yeah, that's that's definitely a bug. Switch it opens. Purple switch it opens. Red door. Unless it was intended. Again, I wouldn't know why though. But it feels like a bug. Three more ghosts. Come on. I think I need to open the green gate still. Okay. This game would have also benefited from having a scoring system. I think it would have given it a lot more value. Um, so something as, as simple as time versus damage taken versus, um, you know, enemies killed, whatever. That sort of stuff. I think it would have uh, helped quite a lot with giving you a sense of purpose for going through all of these things. Last ghost. And now I think the blue switch opens the green door. So something went wrong there, I'm not sure. I may be wrong, but... That sounds like a programming issue. Like, as a programmer, I wouldn't leave the coloring of the switch versus the door in the hands of the level designer. Personally. Yeah, I've opened this green door with the blue switch. Okay, we're almost done with this level, and then there's the last level, where you guys will see a boss fight, which is unfortunately destroyed by a, um, by a bug. It just isn't interesting because of the bug, unfortunately. This last corridor is like, okay, I got it. Can we finish the level, please? Nope, never mind. <laughs> And then my poor obese priest gets hurt. All right, here we go, boss. So there's the boss. And the way to defeat this boss would be obviously running around, etc. But all you need to do is just stay here in the corner. And because the boss collider is so big, right, it'll just get stuck before you and you're fine. I suggested make a round room and they didn't do it. And I know why they didn't do it because they're working with the with the tile map system, and the tile map system does not support anything that isn't made out of squares. At least not easily. So, the the boss fight is kind of ruined. Right? You can just keep running, dodge him once, and now you win. Right? Because he'll never hit you. Okay. 
and then it's a lot of clicking. And then he disappears, and then there's monsters that spawn. Again, there's randomness in how many hearts are dropped. I wouldn't have made it random, certainly not here. Uh, it's a boss fight, it needs to have certain predefined rules, like for example, each of these mobs loses two hearts or one heart or whatever it is. As you can see, a pretty complete game though. Loads going on here. So the boss will disappear. We get another thrash mob. Loads of hearts, so not particularly dangerous. Again though, not not a game for casuals. Definitely a game for gamers. Gamers can deal with this easy. So I think this is his last bit of the health bar. And then he is dead. There we go, we're done. Oh, I get hurt by him. And then there's a... Yawon, good job bud. You're doing good lad. <laughs> there we go, we're done with this game. Congratulations to this team. The most complete game in the... Uh, in the competition, but certainly not a game for casual players. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing, it's just... Is what it is. Lack of variety. I mean, there's variety in the mechanics, but the enemies, after you know them a bit, because the levels are so large, you keep meeting them. It's not that interesting. Um, I think it would have been much more interesting to have, like, upgrades to the priest, uh, different guns, maybe, all sorts of stuff. And making a smaller third level would have helped. Second level, I just don't dig it, the one with the, the ghost following you, just because of the execution. It would need to have much more intelligent AI in deciding how to follow you, when to follow you, and so on. And you can get trapped as well, which kind of ruins the experience. <clears throat> but other than that, this is, I think, a great game. Uh, okay, let me read through the comments here, because I've ignored them for a bit. Um... User says, I can't believe you, you guys did this in only five days. They did it and basically without my, my help, which is pretty epic. Uh, in some of our group's uh, vision, they thought that the game should be very, very difficult, even more difficult than now, and that influenced us with the difficulty. Uh, could have also been fixed by having the boss go back in the middle if he detects that it's stuck. Yeah, that's, another, that's a fairly good idea. Uh, that would have worked, I think. That would have worked. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> uh, C. Vila says, Game psychology is definitely one of the most neglected aspects. Sid Meier had a long interview about it and said how a game can be killed if the player believes he is being treated unfairly. Absolutely. <laughs> Sid Meier, of all people. <laughs> XCOM and Civilization, alright? And maybe also shooting a painful amount of bullets is punishment. Sure, maybe. Neat way to fix it. What about turning uh, in random direction? Uh, random, we talked about random. Random is complicated. Random could mean he turns into the same direction again and again and again and again. Or it just always returns to the mill like some Nintendo games. Yep. Uh, what language was this written in? C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. Thanks, guys. All right. So, well done, team. Uh, I think Team B uh, has done a fantastic job. But... Uh, the design really leaves something to be desired. It's great from an execution perspective, um, but what the team B, I think, could have used the most, in my opinion, is not so much for their programming to change, although there's part of that. What they should have done more of, or at least some of, is playtest, meaning getting the game in front of the other people there in the room who perhaps weren't doing anything at the time or asking them if they had time and gather feedback on a small notepad, see what's actually happening, right? How many people can get past level one? How many people get bored? Uh, what reactions do we have? Do people hate the sounds, etc.? All of these comments would have really helped you because you guys were going really well on your own, but you never got any feedback from others other than myself and it hurt your game. 
in the end. But it's it's a great little product. Well done. <clears throat> Let me read the comments. Definitely amazing what kids have done. I wish uh, I had the focus to do something like this. Uh, well, <laughs> let's put an asterisk on that. Uh, the kids were basically my prisoners for about a whole week. So it's, I mean, I never forced them to do anything. They could do whatever they wanted, right? But uh, there was this, this environment that their parents had paid for, uh, for them to be there and live fully immersed in this experience. Obviously, they wanted to do it, but the, the environment helped having that focus. Uh, user says, very nice work though. I'm sure you all learned a lot and I'm still shocked how much you got done so fast. Agreed. Yeah, I was the only playtester which was good for finding bugs, but bad for changing for a better design. I see. Uh, Sevilla says, I'm surprised so far the two games haven't had a more immersive sound. Uh, sound was kind of the issue we had, uh, or one of them anyway. It was, I think, the area that we neglected the most. And it tends to be the area that you neglect the most when you do game jams and all sorts of stuff. It tends to come later, unless you're an audio guy, then that changes things, right? So let's move on to Team C. Let's see what Team C has done. Oh, hello, I remember this. Uh, here I have had to help quite a bit. Uh, team C, uh, I think, was one of the youngest teams. Um, and one of the most inexperienced. I believe no one in Team C had any degree of experience prior, at least not a serious one. Alright, so... The first thing that a player will do in Harry's Fall is try to move left and right, and they will notice that the that the little bunny is sort of moving, but he can't move. So let's press the space bar. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm a bunny. <laughs> now, I, I like this game quite a lot because it's very well contextualized. Uh, now this was an idea kind of I came up with, right? Which was, let's play as a bu They had a bunny, right? They came up with the idea of a bunny. And I said, okay, let's make a bunny that's a bunny. Meaning, a bunny that can't walk. <laughs> the bunny needs to hop. <laughs> which is funny. And so this initial level, the menu, is actually designed to teach you how to play. Uh, now it wasn't play tested a huge lot, but I did see people learn how to play fairly easily. The air control isn't obvious, but you kind of pick it up. And one thing that isn't obvious is the charging jump mechanic. So that's why the buttons are, are placed so far up, so that you have to go, okay, wait a moment. Oh, I see, right? So that's though that's my experience as a UX guy, to be frank. <laughs> so let's jump and hit the start button. Yes. Okay, so there's these things. These are logs. And there's a waterfall. Okay. Alright. Oh dear. Now the music is peculiarly decent in my opinion. It kind of fits, but the, the loop is far too short. Uh, so it gives you an aneurysm. There is a physics bug that's very evident. The little bunny sort of jittering up and down on the platforms. That's because the physics are very cheap. It's just a basically a rigid body and nothing else. Uh, when you're dealing with platforms that move, you need a much more sophisticated setup um, where you actually detect that you're on a platform. So the first level seems already fairly challenging. I need to do these very long jumps and just one error in the middle could lead me down. But then again, there are an enormous obstacles. Oh, hello, there's Rabbitina. She's just chilling there. I've reached her. Oh, oh, second level. No congratulations message. Yeah. So you start seeing where the game was actually kind of rushed. The team re ran out of out of time. So they made a few more levels, but you'll notice another thing as well. There's very few mechanics. There's just this jumping, which is somewhat fun, but I mean, it does grow somewhat old uh, fairly quickly. Oh boy. Oh yes. So apparently the death area is further down, or there is none. Well, I do know, it's, it's just further down. So it, it, it allows for these like, oh snap moments, which I really like in video games. Huh! Yes. Hello, Rabbitina. Your hero's here. 
In the original design, there was supposed to be a fox that would come down in a hot air balloon, pick up Rabatina with a hook and pull her up. Uh, we just ran out of time. Um, this was a team I had to help quite a bit, uh, with the code in particular. Um, but we did keep it fairly simple. Um, the level design was done by them entirely. Uh, I believe Lucas and Riley did the level design. The art was made by Gavin. And some of the music and the sounds, as well as some of the music... Oh dear! Uh, some of the music was made by Lucas, but some of the music and the sounds, as far as I understand, were made by Ty Vale. Uh, oh boy. I need to focus, guys. Oh no! Yes, he lives. See, this game actually gets you to be somewhat emotional, darn, <laughs> somewhat emotional towards towards the character, and I like this. It's it's good involvement. Uh, my little bunny's a zombie now. Okay, I need to do it again. Now there is an ending, uh, but it's not a proper ending. In fact, if I recall correctly, the game will crash before it ends, <laughs> which is uh, a, a blemish on Riley, the programmer's. Uh, testing because I recall distinctly telling him did you test this <laughs> and he said yes I said okay <laughs> but I think the game crashes at the end there should be one more level oh boy oh no death okay one more try and then if I can't do it we'll move on but yeah deceptively difficult game oh boy I'm poo no that that was just unacceptable need to do it again um, I really like the atmosphere, I really like the character, I think Gavin's Gavin's bunny is hilarious. Uh, the graphics are a little bit schizophrenic, meaning the logs are a little bit too simplistic, whereas the background is a tiled and, you know, more elaborate look. It's the same applies for the, uh, for the waterfall. Uh, but yeah, the design mechanics are simple. I think one of the ideas they wanted to toy with was a spike that if you touched, you get hurt. Uh, oh, fridge. Ah! Yes! <laughs> okay, last level, I guess. I, I know there's like four, and then it stops. Oh, bummer. Well, that that's a good jump, Mike. Well done. You're a pro gamer. Test skills. <laughs> okay, here we go. We can do this. We can do this. Uh, the title of the game is Harry's Fall. Because this is a waterfall. And he's a ha he's Harry because he's a hare. See what they did there? Pretty good. Uh, I'm a sucker for puns, so... I think the original name was Henry. And then one of them, or something, or even myself, proposed. Let's go with Harry. So this level is easier, right? You, you've got a problem with so few mechanics. Oh gosh darn it, did, did the game actually restart from the beginning or something? Or can I not count? I don't know. Anyway, I was saying, with these few mechanics, you've got this problem that... Um, oh boy. I think everything's falling faster now, though. Um, with these few mechanics, the level, levels feel very samey. And there's very little sense of progress. Um, I think. Oh, nice seam there in the background. Straight line right here. I think that may have to do with the tiling of the background. And the game crashes and I die. Well, it doesn't crash, but the ending doesn't work. <laughs> it goes like old blue. So it doesn't crash, but it doesn't work. Okay. So... I think this is a good game. It's very simple, but it's fun. Uh, I think this game hits the fun note better than others, but it's far too simple. I had to have more mechanics, had to have more involvement uh, going on there. And the graphics, unfortunately, are... Fortunately, they're cute, so that's good. But they don't mesh together. Like, the, the logs are sort of stripes. And then the background is actually an intricate pattern of, of rocks. So is the waterfall. Um... At least the two rabbits match in terms of style, so that's good. Um, yeah, but I think this was a good project. I think the team picked it well. Uh, simple, basic to do, and they were able to do something fun with it. Uh, I helped them a substantial amount, but still, they were able to do it, and it was a great choice for us for a, for a 
for a project because you want something simple but fun. That's the goal when you're making these small little things. This game could have worked for a Ludum Dari game, I think. So let me read the uh, comments here because there's a few. Uh, user says, haha, that's hilarious, I think, referring to the game. This game was super cool and looked super cool. Just was really hard to control for me. Huh, ah, that's what James says. Interesting. A plus for creativity on the menu. Thanks. I'm probably just really bad at controls like these. No, you gotta get used to it. It's not obvious. Mike is so brutally honest. I hope everyone knows they're supposed to laugh along with him when he says things like the music music gives me an aneurysm. <laughs> well, wait a moment. You, you'll find a project that music is gonna make you want to go on a on a killing spree. Uh, there is a project, I think it's the next one actually, yes, that, that, I mean, the music is, uh, hurt. Um, we may not be able to get through it because of it. Um, Killer Corp says, boo. OMV says, I laugh. Uh, James says, he legit roasted Jack on our team. Yeah, well, that was fun. Cutscenes are annoying though. Oh, cutscenes are incredibly difficult to do. It's something you want to avoid all the time if you can. Um, they're just, they're a stream of exceptions, right? So, uh, let's see. 100% new Flappy Bird, <laughs> to some extent. It's simplistic but consistent. The art is great, the music has a very fitting style, and it even looks fun. Very nicely done. Thanks, user. Uh, Mike can't stop playing. He's hooked. Uh, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> it's my kind of game, I suppose. This game holds a candle to many Nintendo games in the late 80s. That's absolutely true, but it's also not written in assembly, so there you go. <laughs> uh, his honesty is much appreciated. It's reassuring to know he won't lie to make us feel better, and we get very helpful and insightful advice. That's the idea. Uh, a natural dog, exactly what I was thinking. Nope, these, there are five levels. Okay, Mike, there was an average age of the camp. I'm going to tell my stream... I'll be late and that they should come here too in the meantime. Uh, the average age, I believe, was 14, 15. But I'm not sure. Uh, love the small detail in the character that moves and head when he's jumping. Things like that are so important for a good experience. Don't tell anyone, Sevilla, that I did that, okay? <laughs> yep, it's mine. Agree. I stay away from cutscenes completely. The music is bad. Okay, Toxic Boy doesn't like the music. I don't mind the music. I think the music is actually quite fun. But it is too short in the loop. Um, that's the absolute right attitude to have. Uh, harsh. Eh, don't worry about it. Uh, people, people will give you feedback in various different ways. Um, I always say this. Uh, very harsh feedback, including troll feedback, is better than no feedback at all. Uh, you will find when you're developing video games or making any form of art that most people uh, will avoid telling you to your face what it is that's wrong with your thing. But if somebody does tell you what's wrong with your thing, you can at least do something to improve that thing. Or if you can't improve that thing, you can attempt to improve the future thing that you're going to be working on based on that feedback. Now, suppose somebody simply tells you something entirely destructive, like your game is poo. Or something like that. It doesn't tell you much, right? But it tells you something. That individual, for whatever reason, doesn't like your game. Right? And it gives you an opportunity to ask him, okay? Can you tell me exactly why it's poo? Right? Don't waste your time on your feelings. They don't help you. What helps you is listening to people that tell you that there's a problem. And then try to do something about it if you want to slash can slash can interpret what the problem is. So it's much better to get terrible feedback than no feedback at all. That's my stance, always. Uh, OMV says, uh, no, let's see. Uh, James says, music was probably one of the best out of the other games. I would think so. Uh, Toxie Boy says, in my game. Uh, possibly. Uh, think about what happened to EA with Battlefront 2. That is harsh feedback. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of putting it, yes. Mike's right about that too. The more data, the better. And critical feedback is extra rare, actually, so it should be even more valuable than positive criticism. When will this be on YouTube? In a couple of days. Let's move on with the Dino Dodge. All right, so this was a team composed of... It was the most estrogen-filled team. We had three ladies on it and one fella. Uh, let me think of their names. Samantha... 
Tatiana, Sierra, and Will. These were their names. Well, Will and Samantha were programmers. Tatiana was the artist, and Sierra was the sound lady. And well, at least partially. Sierra was very much out of her element. Uh, it, she had never done anything like this. I have very little evidence that she was a gamer. Um, I don't know, right? I, I mean, by a gamer, I mean somebody who's really, really interested in video games, and therefore that migrates to development. Uh, I'm sh not sure there was very much evidence of that at all. Uh, but she did do something uh, which was good, um, you know. Uh, Will and Samantha were in charge of code, uh, both of them fairly inexperienced. Uh, Will somewhat mistakenly uh, used, like, sort of thought that his skills were stronger than they actually were. Um, Samantha less so. Uh, but yeah, it's a team I've helped substantially. Samantha worked harder than everyone else, I believe. She stayed late every single day, uh, I think. And she also found time to help other teams in other other stuff. So anyway, let's begin Dino Dodge. This is our only multiplayer game, guys. And it can be played in single player too, which I really appreciate. Okay, <laughs> so he, here's the music loop. Uh, you've heard it already. That's all the loop, and it'll keep on repeating. And, um, yeah, uh, it'll go on forever. So, uh, please put your knives away. Uh, put, put, put the weapons away from yourselves. <laughs> right? The problem with this, shall we call it a song? It's, it's hard to call it a song, this jingle. Well, obviously, is that it's a jingle. It's ridiculously short. That's one big issue. And the second issue is it's not consistent with any melodic rules that we have in the Western world for music to any degree. The only thing that it kind of does is it conveys a sense of tragedy or angst. And I think that's fine. But I can tell you factually that having this song play fairly loud in a room where parents would come in and like, this song would take over. So, so you're there and you're just hearing this from different computers at, at, at a uh, non-coordinated fashion. It's just unbearable or close to. There's just almost nothing good I can say about this. Unfortunately, the song is too short. Uh, not enough effort went in it. There's only one instrument. That's not great. Now, let's move on to art. Uh, somewhat inconsistent. So we've got the... Particle systems that are using the default particle, they were kind of an afterthought added later. Um, they're pretty good, okay, but they don't really fit in the game's look at all. It's a much more cartoony, flash-like looking game. Um, and the floor doesn't either. So this for floor texture is kind of stretched and weird and imprecise. And if it were precise, it would be pixel art, and that doesn't work either because this isn't pixel art at all. I think they needed a much higher definition for these for this strip of terrain or whatever. It's also kind of odd that the color of the terrain is so similar to the volcano. Uh, because it's kind of difficult to tell where the ground is. But anyhow, I think we can get started. So let's press space to start. And I need to use the arrows to control the dinosaurs. And I need to avoid the meteors. And sometimes the meteors are going to spawn uh, new ground bits. And I'm, I'm controlling both of them at the same time, but it's designed for multiplayer. And you can, look, it's sort of getting in the way of one another, and it, it gets fairly interesting. I, I like this sort of party game. Now, one thing that I really appreciate is the randomness of the falling meteors is actually an int. So you'll see that these particular, oh dear, these particular blocks... Um, are sort of falling in integer positions on the x-axis. I think that's great. Because that way um, you get an evenly growing terrain. But the randomness is not great. Uh, you you start having these ridiculous holes uh, that you can't climb out of and that sort of stuff. And yeah, so going for a high score doesn't, doesn't really, you know help enormously the 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 characters out the characters have super mario jump meaning they can actually jump higher if you hold the button which is great so i've picked up a heart i'm ignoring the jingle <laughs> somehow 
I like it that every now and then the dinosaurs just roar. That's pretty cool. And by the way, if any of the two character di characters dies, um, the game ends. So players have all sorts of ow, incentive to actually leave each other health. For example, now Orange needs to go grab that health quickly before it vanishes. Okay, I got it. There's another health there and it doesn't really matter, but I'll pick it up anyway. So something's wrong with the health being sort of too deep into the ground. But as you can see, the game is quite has longevity. It can be played in two. Uh, you can play it on your own and it's got a scoring system so there's an inherent incentive for you to get better it's a very very simple game uh, I would like some animations on the dinosaurs to be frank but whatever um, and it gets harder and harder with more of these meteors meteorites f ow, fallen and stuff the only thing I don't dig about it is the pure randomness of, of stuff falling. I mean, it's not pure, there's a scoring system, meaning I think you... The heart is like under 2% chance of actually popping up. The ground is 5. I'm not sure. Okay. But it is good fun to keep on going, especially multiplayer. Uh, but it will continue like this and just get faster and harder. And whoa, <laughs> as you can see, it can get quite intense. It does suffer a bit from the Tetris syndrome, meaning that the first levels are just easier. And that's not brilliant. Um, there is a physics bug that kind of ruins it a bit. You can sort of climb and stick to the wall. Um, which can be helpful because, well, not really, but you can climb out to the world that way by jumping on top of one another with the dinosaurs. Uh, but that was minor enough that I and it would have taken a substantial amount of time to fix that I decided yeah let's leave that behind or at least I insisted with the team that they do the tiles don't really tile properly ow whoa okay oh boy you can see okay so now the other dinosaur is sort of almost stuck you can see the problem with these towers sort of grow growing through randomness Anyway, I think I can stop the game here. Let's just see the death screen, how it looks like. Again, another game that has a complete loop. Game over. You have perished. 24,300 score. Press retry. Press space. Escape to go back. And it also uses backspace, so both players can control it, which I, I really appreciate. I think this is clever. I like this game. This is a clever game. Okay, let's read the comments. Uh, this seems really well done too, says user. Dino Dash is the third most arcadey game here, probably. In our game, we had uh, a luck int that had a 5% increase to the chance, so players aren't always unlucky. Though that still had random chance of spawning. I don't know if that's a good option, though. Perhaps. Um, it could work. Uh, I wonder if there's some kind of reward screen for having high enough score. Or surviving long enough to win? No, well, not to my knowledge. Unless they put it and I'm not aware of it. But I don't think so. This team was quite inexperienced. So I think they did a pretty good job getting as far as they did. It's one of my favorite games. There's a few things that, that, that hamper its success. And in particular, I think the music is... I mean... Yeah, the, the music really hurts the game. That's my opinion. Let's, I don't know if there's anything more that I want to add. I think the art is somewhat inconsistent. We talked about that. Um, and there is some, I think more effort could have been put into the game, personally. Uh, there's no animations of any kind. Uh, the concept is neat, but it is too simple. The level is sort of too long playing and re repeats itself a little bit. I would have wanted a few more mechanics, something, and I'm sure they could have squeezed it in. Um, but there you go. Let's move on to team E, second to last team. Okay, this team sent me a new a new build recently, so we're gonna go here. They they thought they were team C in the beginning, so that's why <laughs> that's why they called it this. Now this team was interesting. That's a team that lost a member halfway through. Uh, the members that remained were Tom, Cody, and uh, Ryan. And I think Cody is in charge of the art, but then the art was replaced later. Was replaced later. Uh, he didn't find himself enjoying the art very much, I think. 
Then there was Ryan, who's in charge of level design and some narrative, but the narrative got sort of refurbished later. I think some of the level designs are still in exactly as they are. And Tom, who was a bit, who was the coder, I had to help him quite a lot. He has some experience in Java, um, which helped him, uh, but had never done this before. Uh, so there we go. This game, though, is distinctively different than the others, and I appreciate that. So let's start it. So this music was actually added after the game was completed and he, Tom that is, is a bit of a musician himself so the music is actually pretty decent quality um, though I do have objections to it um, it's a little short the loop and it's got too many pauses in the percussion also the mix isn't brilliant. It gets a bit loud when there are these sort of double trumpets sort of thing. This part I think is great, right? But it lasts very short and then it's gone. Anyway, so Johnny's Adventure. <laughs> I find it rather sad that this was me just telling them how they can use HTML tags to color things in a different color, so I use cyan. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> anyway, A or D or left and right arrow to move. Press escape to quit at any time. Okay, so let's let's go to start. Johnny was searching for some spare parts for his friend. He jumped over the block by pressing W or up arrow. Whee! For all the people who hate using W, you can use space too. Uh, this one does not have Super Mario Jump. It has only one height of jump, which makes sense in a puzzle game. So let's move on. Notice that the little antenna sort of moves about as I move the mouse. Johnny jumped up the small hill in front of him. Johnny saw a gap ahead of him. Jumping this gap was an easy feat. Okay. Notice the bug down here, by the way, there's some sky at the bottom. <laughs> Johnny jumped from block to block carefully, trying not to fall. This message is much better than the previous one because the previous one assumes that the player has no problems when it says was an easy feat. That's a risky thing to do in games. Johnny saw a hill. Curious, he decided to climb up it. There were many holes he tried to avoid as it would delay him from getting the parts for his friend. Johnny was worried about getting stuck in those pits. Little did he know that he could reset the level by pressing R. So basically, if you do this, you can't get out. Well, there's a there's a physics bug on the walls. So you can't get out, so you need to press R. Alright, that's easy enough. I like it. Johnny saw a pit. It looked pretty dangerous. Johnny jumped over the pit. See? If Johnny doesn't jump over the pit, it kind of looks a bit silly. Uh, I would have changed the text to Johnny had to jump over the pit. Or attempted to jump over the pit. You always want to avoid, in games that are slightly, um, what do you call them? They have this sort of narrative embedded in it. To, you want to avoid highlighting that the player is making a mistake, unless that's part of the, of the narrative. And you want to avoid assuming an outcome. Only assume the outcome after you know it has happened. Johnny cleared the pits with ease. That's a perfect example. Did I do it with ease? I don't think so, right? So... I'm not sure what would have gone here, but anyway. The tutorial is awesome though, because it's tutorializing me through the game as opposed to... Uh, sort of putting me in this sort of different area. Okay. Johnny's friend needed new parts because he fell and broke his hand. What an idiot. Alright, that's harsh. So let's go. Oh. That's not supposed to work this way. Let's check. I'm fairly sure that's not how they designed it to be. Exactly. So if you're simply holding the right key, this shouldn't, this shouldn't happen. They, they designed it so that you're supposed to fall and then push forward, like so. Interesting. Uh, I think it may have something to do with uh, um, frame rate, but I'm not sure. Johnny didn't, Johnny didn't like the look of the challenge ahead of him. However, he knew that if he didn't finish it, his friend would have to go a whole week without a hand. Okay. 
So before I had text that escalated really quickly by using the term idiot, and the game suddenly doesn't take itself as seriously as it did before, and now it takes itself seriously again? So it's kind of odd. I don't understand. Johnny saw some ice blocking his way. Fortunately, he remembered that he could melt the ice with his laser. Left click. Oh! Oh, that's a turret. Hey, that works. Cool. Now I can shoot. Awesome. Johnny was annoyed by ice because he had to recharge his laser in between shots. That's true. You can't just click many times in a row. Awesome. Let's fire here. Oh, hello. That, that's a bit of a bug. <laughs> the laser remains there. Johnny's laser was incredibly effective at carving staircases out of ice. Okay, a bit on the nose is a suggestion. I would have preferred no suggestion here. Something else. Johnny wondered why the person creating this level was so cruel as to combine pit and ice. Okay, we're breaking the fourth wall again. Not sure that the game really did that before. Like, or deserves to do it. I, I don't know if that makes sense. So one reason why these puzzles are very easy is because I can just sort of point my um, my click directly on my target. It would have been much better to turn off the click, uh, like the mouse cursor, and instead show uh, a little crosshair around us. I think that would have uh, would have helped substantially. Johnny was beginning to wonder if all of this was worth it. After all, they could just order the parts from Amazon and have them by the end of the week. Okay, this is a situation in which teenagers do not realize that they are pathologically unfunny. And uh, it's not working. Or at least I'm not amused. This is a good puzzle. Here, because if I, if I remove this one, I have to restart. I like the short restarts, the fast restarts. That's great. One thing I'm noticing is the sky is completely immobile. That's not great. It gets really boring real quick. By now, Johnny's wheel was getting tired. Ah, uh, I think that's a pun. I like puns, but this is bad. <laughs> Poor Johnny. Okay. Yeah, so now they're suddenly trying to become funny. I don't think it's working. This puzzle is evil, because if you hit here, you probably fall down. Not probably, I know you do. This, this, this part of the puzzle is like, why are you making me click slowly many times? Developer. Thank you. Johnny saw something that looked an awful lot like ice. It was probably glass. Oh, so my laser, laser goes through. Oh, I see. Cool. Johnny was starting to reconsider his life decision by this point. What is love, baby, don't hurt me? Is this a simulation? Oh boy. <laughs> the definite silence of me not even giggling should be, <laughs> should be fairly evident. Okay, I think this is the last thing. Here's uh, an arm, I think, on a plinth. <laughs> Works for me. I really like the sequential menu, quit, start, that sort of stuff. I think that's brilliant. All right, so let's talk about the level design. Uh, number one, the levels are cool, but it the, the tutorial is too drawn out. There's too many jumping tutorials, uh, in my opinion, uh, and too little actual puzzling, which I was really hoping for. Uh, when I saw that ice, I thought there would be more puzzling. In that way, the narrative actually exacerbates the negative experience for me because I'm going, why did you dedicate so much effort to this? Like, the story is not compelling, it's not interesting. Why is there so much effort dedicated to this and not to the puzzles? I want to have more puzzles. This game was begging to have more puzzles and it ended up not having them, which is a huge shame. Um, air control is very finicky. Um, the uh, the sliding down the wall when you hit it is bad. Now, I kinda coded that in the sense that we did very rudimentary player controllers. And one central problem of all platformers, especially precision platformers, is this. If your character controller isn't fantastic, your game is gonna be bad. Right? And many people think platformers are easy to make, but they're not. If you want to make a good platformer, making a good character controller is really, really challenging. Uh, you'll spend a lot of time on that. Uh, and obviously we didn't have that time. But all in all, fairly complete little game. Uh, quirky, interesting. Uh, interesting mechanics, lots of potential. Um, good little product. It's fun. Unfunny though. Uh, if you want to attempt comedy, you need to have it. 
Like, you need to have the skill to be funny. And the vast majority of the population on this planet, at any age, is unfunny. It just is. That's my opinion, obviously. Many people have a different one. But there's a reason why comedians are few and far between. Very difficult to be funny. Now, let me read all of the comments on chat. Here, what have we got? Uh, da, 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 da. This is probably one of my favorite games, says Frixam. Yes, very good game, though I saw parents having trouble with the first jump. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't obs I, I didn't see parents. I'm going to have to agree on the Amazon joke is shallow. I like puns, but this this is bad. Yeah, that's that's you're quoting me quoting me now. This game is a lot of creativity in it too. If you had to choose between showing no personality at all and making bad jokes all game long, I think bad jokes could be the right call. That's a good point, user. That's a good point. Between having no personality at all and making jokes, bad jokes, I would probably pick B too. Now, with that said, there's a third option, which is making good jokes, <laughs> and then you knock it out of the park. Biznagel, I like it. How much time did they have to make this? Uh, not like they had team teams to review. Uh, they had five days. Uh, yes, I agree. The consistent goofiness adds some narrative to the game. Internet is shallow. Uh, AKA, good luck making Mike laugh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, writing takes more than five days. Comedians take more. Uh, take many months. Of constantly writing and performing to be funny and that's after years of mastering their craft absolutely uh, that's an important piece of feedback biznagle right because i have the very distinct feeling that many people who make video games have this odd perception that they are good writers let alone good comedic writers right anybody who has attempted to write anything should know how difficult it is let alone if you're trying to be funny if you're trying to be funny it's just next level it's stupidly hard right so but as user says no narrative or bad narrative, go with bad narrative. I think I think I'll be with you there. Well, I mean, within reason. But yeah, pretty good project. I like it. Uh, this one received a substantial amount of my help uh, from the coding perspective in particular. But the design in general, I touched very little. And now let's move on to the last one, Team F. Oh, this is another team that I barely interacted with. And um, they knew what they were doing. Now it's very interesting because I think let me let me think of their names. So there was Zach, there was Owen, uh, there was Liam, and then there was Ali. Uh, Ali, she was in charge of art, though I don't think she'd done it before. I have the distinct impression she didn't enjoy doing what what she do doing the summer camp very much, but she did enjoy the company of the other guys, and she kind of did do her part. As far as understanding, in the end of the day, all of the art is hers. Uh, I helped her learn how to animate an explosion in 2D. Uh, and she did a fairly, pretty, fairly good job. I, I like the explosion. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, hey, blue guy. Uh, oh, there's more comments. Team F's game was fantastic. I don't mind bad jokes as long as it's consistently bad. <laughs> That's a good point, Dev idea. Um, I like your open-mindedness. Seems like a good teacher. I appreciate that. Thanks, Biznagel. What was I saying? Right. So uh, Liam was the most inexperienced of his team and the most sort of like fish out of water, but he was willing to put in some effort. Uh, with a bit of my help, he was the person I helped the most on the team. He built the character controller, fairly rudimentary, but it works. And the bullet controller, uh, very rudimentary, but it also works. So who are we to complain? Am I right? And then there is uh, Zach, who was quite experienced. He's done this many, many times before. Zach is a very interesting individual. He uses Unity in a deeply different way than I do. Uh, and I say Unity because, like, I don't know, he's made all of his patterns with very little code and a lot of design. It's very interesting. Um, not the way I would have approached most of the challenges, but he's made it work, and that's pretty good. Though with that said, it is somewhat short-sighted, because he doesn't really have a proper loop to the game. They don't have a real loop. It's, I think, the only game that doesn't loop, actually. Uh, but, yeah, just fascinating. Uh, and then there was Owen. Owen uh, clearly has some experience making music. And making sounds he he I, I did help him out a little bit with a few things i think that particularly the sound effects he had made were very 
weak initially, but he's improved them massively, massively later, and they became pretty good. Uh, thanks for the follow, Nay Suzy. Uh, the music, though, the music for this game is excellent, and Owen was also responsible for making the music for the first game, if you guys remember it, the one from Team A. Uh, I think the music in this in this particular uh, game that we'll check out soon is fantastic. It really suits the environment. It works well. And I remember talking to his parents and I went like, I think you should definitely let him uh, invest some energy in this. I think in particular electronic music uh, based on samples, that sort of stuff, mixing, mastering, techniques like that, quantizing, uh, etc. He already knew a little bit about and he could definitely explore it further. I think he's got a he's got a shot at that. Let me read the comments. Missed it by that much. It's all right. You'll see the video. Uh, he'll upload it to YouTube later on. Yeah, yeah. You helped me make the SFX less empty. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and I helped him also uh, understand the importance of having a, a a thick mix, right? So you're gonna have low tones for certain stuff and high tones for certain other stuff, while the music is somewhat dancing around all of these sounds. And you'll see the presentation of this game. I think is going to be the most impressive. This game is the one that looks the most enticing visually, uh, audiovisually, I would say. Uh, with that said, there are defects and we'll talk about them soon. So let's launch it. Okay. You could have hidden the mouse. This would have been a very cheap thing to do because your game doesn't use it. Okay, so I'm using a controller to control it. They are the only team that supports controller, I believe. Um, and this first monster enemy is just there for you to sort of uh, kill so the waves start. And that's kind of what I mean by the states that Zack put together are a little bit... <laughs> like, <laughs> they work in a tiny game like this where nobody cares about continuity, if that makes sense. But it's not even a bad idea, it's kind of clever that you have to act before the game starts. At any rate, uh, there's two... Um, ways of interacting with the game. One is by pressing A and shooting, and one is by pressing B and uh, turning on a shield that allows you to ram into enemies, uh, which is really useful for later and obviously allows you to absorb all damage. Uh, my HP is in the bottom left, my shield is in the bottom right. I find it very difficult to understand where the shield charges. I can tell when it's charged, but yeah, it's not brilliant. Uh, anyway, let's get started. Now, there's a bit of a bug, you can actually, if you tap faster, you shoot faster, which is a bit silly, and you can't hold the button. Uh, this becomes important later, because you really need to to press this many, many times. Now, one thing you'll notice is I can't see that enemy. That's because they've developed their game only for one screen ratio, and it's actually the wrong one. They went with, like, the default Unity no ratio system. <laughs> And so I can't see enemies sometimes. Uh, generally speaking, you always want to go with um, 16 nines. Okay, so I had the shield there, and then I lost it. It's kind of difficult to tell when you lose it. Okay, the game is designed to be very difficult, and it was. I, I think none of the parents were able to get anywhere past any of the waves. And yeah, you're gonna get a bit of a sore hand. Oh, cool. Oh, darn it. I thought I, I could use my shield, but I couldn't. That was interesting. Hmm. Yeah, this game is the one I think with the most bugs. Um, darn it. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I got him. <laughs> Four health. And you'll find that the final boss is actually fairly simple, by comparison. Sorry, I need to kind of focus, because I'm going to get hand cramps by doing this. Yeah, I would have much appreciated a hold the button down. Okay. I think, yeah, I think my shield isn't working. I'm actually eating the bullets and getting hurt. That's a bit of a problem. I don't know if what bug is going on there, but I know there are a few in this game. So I've got one health now. 
I think I'm probably using the shield too late, so I, I get hurt first. That would be my bet. Generally speaking, if your user is suffering <laughs> through your game, something wrong. <laughs> well, you can also cheese. You can just wait and then recharge your shield and then kill him. Gosh, obnoxious. Alright, got him. I think this next one will be the boss. Yeah, there's the boss. So these mines cannot really be hit until they start targeting you, which is weird. Uh, it's a strange design decision because it's very difficult to justify. So now I'm actually ramming him and shooting at the same time. Darn it. Anyway, if you kill the boss, the game actually remains stuck. And then this bug happens. Because I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, let's uh, go. Let's recap real quick. Audiovisual, amazing. Uh, I mean, it is a bit samey after a bit, but it's. It's still pretty good. Um, I, I feel compelled to play it when I see it, which is good. Um, I think the ship design is a bit simplistic. The The ships are a lot less pretty than the explosions and the lasers. There's, there's some discontinuity there. Um, I think the the feedback of how you use the shield is off. So if I think if you use the shield... Like just telling when the shield to charge is hard, it's it's telling how it's uh, telling how it's charging and where it's charging is difficult. Um, there are no instructions on the screen, so obviously I needed to know how to play, which I did. But if you don't, you're done. Um, excuse me. Hello, Andrew. What's up? Hi. What? Uh, uh, I'm on stream. What do you want? Um. I want to. Play soccer. You want to play soccer? Yes. I'm in the middle of a stream. I can't do it. I'm busy. Sorry. Uh, but Zoe can do that. Zoe can do that? Yes. Yeah, you can play with your sisters. That's fine. But I can't. Bye. Bye. Close the door, please. Yes. Thank you. All right. That's uh, that's my two-year-old. I also have a new child. She is one day old. She was born yesterday, literally. <laughs> Her name is Melissa. <clears throat> uh, what was I saying? Ah, right. So, the game, yes. <sighs> what other problems are there? Where are the bugs? Uh, there's a few There's a few too many. Uh, I would much prefer to have a game that works than a game that doesn't. Uh, with that said, I think the music is legendary. Um... It works really well for the environment. I would have probably preferred a new song for the boss. I think that would have helped. And also some kind of intermission, like warning, warning, you know, typical classic bullet hell game. I don't really dig the sort of pattern behavior, the behaviors of the enemies. Uh, it just... There's a lot of fiddling to get him to die. <laughs> Then there was the the problem with the aspect ratio, where for me, because you guys developed it in free aspect, all of the enemies were outside of the screen. That's an issue. Uh, so yeah, there, there was these these bugs that was niggling. But other than that, it's a pretty good game. It's fun. All right, wait, wait, I forgot the key one. Uh, let the players hold the button down, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like I mean I'm getting cramps here. It's you you don't you don't want to do that. Um, unless the game is specifically designed for that, and I just don't get the feeling that it is from you guys. And, uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Let me read the comments here. What do we got? Snappy, snappy, snap, I'm not sure. It says, hi, hi. Uh, I thought we used 16 nines. You did not. The music is really engrossing. Agreed. The background does the jet theme justice. I agree. Music is fantastic. Owen, you have, an, uh, you have a lot of promise. That's what I think as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> Owen is immediately plugging himself. That's all right. 
Good work. That's where I reside, if you're wondering. Pricksam says, Aw, I suspect it has to do with Andrew, not with my face. Sis, Dad says you have to play with me. <laughs> yes. Congrats. Nice job on that game, though, you guys. It has some cracks, but most of Mike's feedback could be fixed with just a little bit more time. You got a lot done still. Agreed. Our game will cause carpal tunnel, <laughs> carpal tunnel syndrome. Yes. Ideally, carpal spelled with an A, but that's all right. Okay, gotta run. See ya, user. Thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> and uh, Owen says, see ya, thanks for the input. So that concludes my short review of the games that we did with the six teams. What's up? Hi, Forsaken Brute. Uh, and um, yeah, conclusions. Let me Let me gather my thoughts for conclusions for this particular summer camp and how I felt about it. And what I could have improved. So I've been given feedback by one team. I've been given very little negative feedback, which isn't helpful, but I have received some. Uh, one piece of negative feedback that I got is not enough focus on level design or character development. Now, for character development, I don't know what to say. The only game with characters, games with characters, are Johnny's story. I suppose um, Ascension also has the priest, but it's hardly a character. It's more like a husk for bullet shooting. Uh, and then there was Harry, the little bunny, right? And it's difficult to develop characters with such such a short time, right? Uh, so I wouldn't focus on that very much. But level design, I think that's an interesting aspect. We definitely didn't cover that. And one of the reasons why we didn't cover that very much is because a lot of my attention was dedicated to the technical aspects of actually making the thing happen, making the games. Um, and... If I had to choose between the two, I would still choose making the games. It is more important to actually have a game done by the end, at least from my perspective, than learning about level design. With that said, uh, discussion about level design, like more of them, could certainly be done if justified by the circumstances. I think the biggest problem that I had was that I dedicated an enormous amount of time helping Team A, and I didn't stop them from making very silly decisions in their development. Like, we're going to make the Binding of Isaac in five days. That would have been a silly decision. <laughs> By the way, we never coded the line. <laughs> and, uh, that's not your fault. It's my fault. I should stop you. Uh... Yeah, so other than that, I don't know, but here's what I think in the end of the day. I think all six projects are fully functional games. That's a massive success. I think many of the children have learned something. Chief among the things they've learned is that the amount of effort that they put in translates directly into how good the game is going to be. Directly. Uh... Now, obviously, a higher degree of competence reduces the amount of necessary effort input. In other words, you can work smart once you know what you're doing. <laughs> but I, I, I sincerely hope that came home as a, as a learning for the kids. And, um, and of course, some notions, etc. Uh, I have evidence to suggest that Team A, Team E, uh, and Team... C have done more work at, after the end of the camp of their own accord. Uh, two of them even provided me with a new build. So overall, I think it went fairly well. And hopefully it'll happen again next year. And hopefully we'll be able to negotiate another contract with the school. And I'll see some of these kids again. But we'll see. Let's read what people are saying. Freak Sam says, really glad you, you gave input on stuff, Mike. Helps a lot. You're a fantastic teacher. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was our fault, too. It wasn't. Uh, oops. Grammar police time, says Owen. Agreed. Uh, learn more than I ever could in an online course with this summer camp. Well, good, because you paid for it. So, well, we'll certainly hope <laughs> that would be the case. Uh, yes, very much looking forward to the next year. All right, then. Well, I will see whoever I see. And... Um, I think I will conclude this stream for tonight. 
Especially my, if, if you're teaching again, well, I'll try. If I'm teaching again, you'll learn how to spell your correctly. That's a promise. You apostrophe re. Fact. <laughs> anyway, everyone have a good night. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to all of the devs who tuned in to comment and give us their opinions. Thanks for the follow, Biznagel. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Good night. <laughs>